Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Designer. I'm down in my utility room today, so it might sound a little bit echoey. It's a little bit of a smaller room compared to upstairs where I usually do these videos. So today I'm just gonna talk about this new machine that I've got and what I plan to do with it. This is a Omeo CNC. It is one of the many Chinese CNC brands out there. The cutting area is 30 by 40 centimeters. It's, it's called a 30 40. The more common ones are probably 60 40. It also goes up to 60 90 as well. I went with the 30 40. First of all, it was second hand, so I didn't really have much choice. Um, and it's very rare that you see one of these Omeo CNC's come up on, on the UK eBay site. And also, I'm mainly going to be machining metals with this, and I didn't want something very, very big, because obviously the, the bigger you make something, the less rigid it's going to be. So I think a 3040 is a nice compromise in terms of size. I can still cut out pretty much everything that I can think that I'm going to want to build, I would like to do furniture and stuff like that. Obviously, it's far too small for things like that, but everything else that I do, everything else that I've kind of built in the past, everything else that I've 3D printed that I could maybe machine in metal, it's all you know been pretty small. So I think this will do me for, for a lot of the stuff. I'm gonna go over some of the things that I looked out for when I was buying the CNC, and hopefully it will help you as well. So the first thing that you can see is that it's got linear rails. Now, linear rails are preferred because they are much more rigid and there is much less slack in them. Now, I've seen other videos online with the, the more generic Chinese CNC's and they have the, the, the round uh, rails and the normal bearings. And I was really surprised of how much slack is on them. You, I mean, you, you know, you can really push in the, in the spindle here and you can get a good amount of uh, flexion. And I was really surprised. The first thing that I did when I got this, I got it into my living room, was I tested a slack. And I, and I pushed on the spindle and I can't even move it. it. It doesn't move at all. Now, I'm sure if I got a, um, a dial test indicator, it would probably be moving a little bit. But compared to what you see of the more generic Chinese um, CNC brands, you know, the flexion is, is visible with the naked eye. And I mean, I cannot see any flexion whatsoever when I push this. So the linear rails, they really do make it a lot more rigid. Now, another thing that it's got, and this is more common with, with a lot of the Chinese CNC's that I've been looking at. I've been keeping my eye on these for a number of years now, and I see more and more of the CNC's with, with ball screws as opposed to lead screws. These are basically more accurate and more reliable as opposed to your traditional lead screw with a with a lead screw nut. And these also have NEMA 23 motors. I don't really know much about motors to be honest with you. I know that servo motors are probably the best and you'll be very unlikely to, to get those on your CNC if you're buying it cheaply from China. It's also got an 800 watt spindle and I've been told on the Omeo website that the 800 with the four bearings, the air-cooled one, which is the upgraded one, is enough to machine metal. So I haven't actually machined any metal at the moment. I've just been cutting wood. I've yet to test whether that is actually true. So overall, I'm really, really happy that I finally got a CNC. I'm, I'm really happy that I've been able to get one that does have linear rails. It has got ball screws. It seems to have a good enough uh, spindle. The electronics are, well, I mean, Omeo do a, a good job, a better job than most of the other Chinese manufacturers out there. Um, they do a good job of, of wiring it and making it all clean. And it does meet the various different um, certifications that you need to, to bring stuff into the EU, which is, is good to know. One of the big problems that I had though on the first few days was trying to get this running on Mac 3. And the files that the Omeo manufacturers give to you, they're basically a cracked version of Mac 3. Um, they give you some files that you need to copy into, into installation folders. And I had a lot of problem getting one of the files working. It just didn't seem to read it properly. I did so much investigation for hours and hours and hours, and I was able to find another DLL file that I swapped over and it worked. Now, I know that a lot of forums were posting these kind of questions. You know, they, they had this Mac free issue and the links to the files weren't up anymore. I was able to find this link and I'm gonna put it in the description and I'm gonna do a separate video on it specifically because I think that other people might come across this issue and it was really bugging me to get it working. 
So if you are having issues with starting up your CNC with Mac 3 and you've got these kind of like Chinese brands, try that file and try that link. I'll do another video later on to just explain what exactly I did. So what am I going to be doing with this? Well, as you can see, I've done a very, very basic dust shoe. This is the first thing that anyone needs to do if they've got a CNC. I was surprised how much dust this thing kicks out when it's cut in. I mean, I've used a, a hand router before, but yeah, when this thing is moving along, it is kicking out a lot of dust. Without a dust shoe, this stuff goes absolutely everywhere. You know, I'm in a small room. This is kind of backing into my kitchen. Luckily, I've got two doors between the kitchen and this room, so not a lot of dust is gonna get in there, but yeah, make sure you get a good dust extractor. Make sure you get a, a dust shoe set up so it is capturing most of the crap that comes out of it. One of the things that I'm most excited about trying out with this CNC is I'm really looking forward to trying to machine my own foiling plates. So if you look at a few videos back, and I'll put it up in the top, we try to use letterpress photopolymer sheets to try and make some hot foil dyes. Didn't really work too well. I had to outsource it to my usual dye maker uh, in London, Metallic Elephant, and they obviously do a marvelous job, but for little tiny jobs, if I just want to foil a little bit of text or something like that, I'm hoping that I can do it on here. And this is like the main reason why I bought a CNC. And it's the main reason why I specifically wanted something with ball screws, something with, with linear rails, you know, a little bit more of a better machine because I needed the accuracy. So it's gonna be really interesting. I cannot wait to get some sheets of aluminium and to start trying to engrave some hot foil in place. Other stuff is, you know, just kind of upgrading my studio. I'm really looking forward to working in metal. It kind of seems for like a, you know, a tinkerer and a maker, making stuff in metal feels like the pinnacle of the materials that you can use. And I'm really looking forward to getting into, into welding and machining parts out of you know solid blocks of, of metal. That's gonna be really cool. So there's not much else to say. I'm gonna be hopefully posting more stuff on CNC and you know how beginners like me can get started. It is a big learning curve. It is a big difference compared to 3D printing. There is a lot more involved in it and it is quite difficult to get your head around. But you know, there's lots of resources out there that are very, very helpful. Yeah, hopefully I'll put together some of my own guides as well that might be helping out people who are new to this. But that's all I really wanted to say for today. Let me know if you've got any ideas that I should maybe do with this CNC. If you've got any questions, if you need any help, if you're about to get one yourself, feel free to post a comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you later.